video for AQA Further Pure Mathematics, Calculus Section 3.2, Differentiating Arc Tan X. There are two different um, ways that we can talk about the inverse of a trigonometric function. One is to use the idea of arc, an arc tangent in particular, or tan to minus 1 of X. These are both in common usage. Uh, remembering that tan to minus 1 is the inverse function and not the reciprocal as we would use with x to the minus 1. We're going to be using arc tan in these presentations. First let's consider the graph of y equals arc tan x. If we reflect the tangent curve y equals tan x in the line y equals x will get the inverse function arc tan. But because tangent is a periodic function, we need to limit the range of arc tan to lie between negative pi by 2 and pi by 2. So you can see this is the graph here as x gets larger then and positive, it's approaching pi by 2 at the top end, and as x gets goes towards the negative infinity, then arc tan x is approaching negative pi by 2. The other thing I'd like you to note is that at all points on this curve, the tangent is going to be positive, with its greatest value here at the origin. So now what we're going to do is to consider how we find a function in terms of x for the derivative dy by dx if y is equal to arc tan x. Well, if y equals arc tan x, then we can say that the tangent of y must be equal to x. And we can then differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. On the left-hand side, we need to use implicit differentiation. The derivative of tan is sec squared, so this gives us sec squared y, but then multiplied by dy by dx. And the derivative of x is equal to 1. So therefore, rearranging that, we get that dy by dx is equal to 1 over sec squared y. But there's a trigonometric identity for sec squared. Sec squared is 1 plus tan squared, so this can be written as 1 over 1 plus tan squared of y. But from above, tan y is equal to x, and therefore tan squared must be x squared. So we get that the derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Or in other words, the derivative d by dx of arc tan x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Note that x squared is always greater than or equal to 0, <coughs> and therefore uh, the derivative is always going to be positive. Well, we now have that the derivative is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. And if we put in x equal to 0 there, then we get that the derivative at the origin is equal to 1. Or in other words, this tangent at the origin here is y equals x. Clearly, as x increases, 1 plus x squared increases, and therefore the derivative is getting smaller and smaller. And that's what is shown on the graph as we approach uh, the positive um, infinity, then the gradient here is becoming zero. And likewise, as we approach negative infinity here, the gradient is becoming zero. So that our algebraic answer clearly is in agreement with the graph that we had earlier. A more general derivative 
can be found in, the, in a similar method. So if we've got y equals arctan x over a, then this time tangent of y is equal to x over a. And when we differentiate, this time we get sec squared y dy by dx is equal to 1 over a. And therefore, dy by dx is equal to 1 over a multiplied by sec squared of y. But we can use the uh, trigonometric identity again. So this is 1 over a multiplied by 1 plus tan squared y. But from above, tan squared y is x squared over a squared. So this must be equal to 1 over a multiplied by 1 plus x squared over a squared. We can then multiply uh, both the top and the bottom line by a to give a over a squared multiplied by 1 plus x squared over a squared. And multiplying the bottom out there that we get, therefore, this is equal to a over a squared plus x squared. So we found that the derivative of arctan x over a is a over a squared plus x squared. So in summary then, the two results that we found are that the derivative of arctan x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared, or if we've got arctan x over a, then it's a over a squared plus x squared. And we'll be looking in a later video how we can use these results to help us with integration. Well, that's the end of this video. Um, in the next one we'll be looking at integrating using arc sine x.